Good afternoon everybody, hope you're having a fantastic day today. We are gonna be looking at how to predict customer behavior using something called the law of large numbers. Now, if you're interested in this sort of content, make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on. Let's get into the video straight away. Okay, so if you're someone that's looking to sell on Amazon, uh, or you currently are selling on Amazon, and you're looking to launch your first or your next product, then at some point, you're gonna have to create your listing, and you're gonna have to get images made, and you're gonna have to basically create your listing so that it can convert as high as possible. But the problem is that until you start making sales, you don't know if it's gonna convert. You don't know if the picture's gonna work, if the title's gonna work, if the price is right, um, or if you've got enough reviews or the reviews are right. So you're not gonna know these things until they actually become a reality. So you think, okay? However, I'm gonna teach you something today um, which I've been using for a long, long time, but I just didn't understand the theory behind why it worked. I was uh, watching a Netflix do documentary. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember what it's called, but it's about probability. It's probably something like probability something or other. And in there, then they talk about something called the law of large numbers. And I was watching this, I was like blurry eyed at night, kind of, hand on head, all that sort of stuff. And I was like, oh my God, this is exactly why the system I use works. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that uh, right now so that you can create your listing on Amazon. Or actually, it, it doesn't even have to be on Amazon, it could be anywhere online or even in a physical store, right? How you can actually predict a customer behavior, like predict it, by using the law of large numbers. So we're gonna pop onto my screen right now. This is actually part of um, something that I've been working on for quite a while now. At the bottom you can see it's called the functional design formula. And this is this is basically uh, a bonus part of the training that uh, I'll, be, I'll be making available maybe within the next few months, okay? Um, really incredible training that I've been working, just like a lot of time being spent on it. Uh, but it's all about how you create the highest converting images, listing, and, and uh, you know, visuals for your brand by using functional design rather than kind of beautiful design. And this is something I can go into another day if you want me to, then I can give you more hints about this, just let me know down in the comments, okay? But today we're gonna to be looking at one part of this, which is uh, which is a part I call customer verification. So how can you uh, predict customer behavior with the law of large numbers, okay? And then how do you know if you have high converting images. You're not guessing, how do you know if you have high converting images? And if you do, uh, if you understand these two things, right? If you can predict customer behavior, where they click, what they look at, and you know that you have high converting images, then you will have a successful product, right? This will make such a big difference. Like one of the biggest reasons why customers are gonna buy your product is because of how it looks, right? What they, what they understand about the product, how it communicates to them. Okay, if you don't get these things right, then it can really hurt your conversions and things like your click-through rates and your the effectiveness of your PPC, your, your organic search rank, everything like that. It affects literally everything. It touches everything within your Amazon business. So you wanna be able to get this right. So this is really cool content that you're getting for free and other people, they're gonna have to pay for this, okay? So the law of large numbers, this is what it is. Okay, the definition of the law of large numbers, I got this from Google, guys. The definition of law of large numbers, this is a tongue twister. I've said this a few times and I've had to cut it. But uh, in probability theory, the law of large numbers, LLN, is a theorem that describes the result of performing the same experiment a large number of times, okay? According to the law, the average of the results obtained from the large number of trials should be close to the expected value and will tend to become closer the more trials are performed, okay? So that basically means, uh, it's quite a long sentence, according to the law, um, the average of those results, so you perform an experiment a number of times, the average of those results should be very close to the actual actual expected the amount of results if done in real life, okay? The more the more tests you do, the more accurate it gets. And that's generally how kind of tests work. You know, you can do one test once. Let me give you an example, actually. <laughs> It's like I, it's like I've made this. If you want to right now, you can get a coin out of your pocket. You probably don't need to. But if I ask you to flip a coin, okay, uh, and guess the outcome, you're either gonna get it right or wrong, okay? Because it's one coin flip. It's either gonna land on heads or tails, and you have a 50% chance of getting that right or wrong. But you will get it either one, like the right, or you will get it wrong. And it's, it's, it's hard to tell which, which of that's gonna be, okay? 
However, if I ask you to flip a hundred times, so you get the same coin and you flip it a hundred times and guess the outcome, okay, you'd most likely, you're probably gonna say that about 50 times it will land on heads and about 50 times it will land on tails. And you're probably gonna be very, very close. It might be you know, 48, 52 or whatever it may be, or 50, you know, 49, 51, but it's gonna be extremely close to 50, 50 because you know the probability will be around 50, 50. Okay, so you're probably gonna get it near enough correct because of the 100 times that you've actually flipped the coin, okay? This is the law of large numbers at play. This is how it works. The more times you repeat an experiment, the more likely you are to be able to predict the outcome successfully to a very, very close margin, okay? So why the hell am I telling you this, all right? Um, all businesses make money, right, because of the law of large numbers. They all make money because of the law of large numbers. If you can predict customers' actions, you can predict how successful your businesses will be. So if you look at any website um, or any person that advertises, they know that they can spend this much money to get this many leads, to get this many uh, people that visit their website, this many people click a link, this many people end up buying, this many people take an upsell, this many people end up being a repeat customer, and it's all statistics, however, if you have one person go through it and they don't buy anything, that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. You just need more data, you need more experiments, more people, and over time, the average is generally what you will get, right? But if you can predict that, then you can predict how successful your business will be. Really, really interesting topic for sure, okay? So this starts for you with creating high converting images. As we know that your images are one of the biggest reasons why someone buys your Amazon product, okay? So how do you know if you have the right images? What tests can you do? What experiment can you do, like the coin flip, where you can complete it multiple times and you can get you know, a result that is predictable, okay? So this is what I do, and this is what I've done for a long time. I just didn't know why it worked. So the law of large numbers, I didn't, know, I didn't know it existed, okay? But in, in theory, or sorry, in, in practicality, it does work, okay? So this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna have your, your images created for your Amazon listing. Um, and in terms, of, if you wanna know how to do that, that's what the actual functional design formula is for. Uh, it's like a three-step strategy, okay? But we can't go through that today. What you're gonna do is you're gonna show your images to someone, okay, and you're gonna ask them to scroll through them on mobile uh, because most people shop on mobile, so you want people to be able to see it on mobile. Um, the text is gonna be the right size, you know, it needs to be as real as possible. And just basically as if they're on Amazon, so they're gonna scroll through like that, okay? You say, hey, look at these photos, scroll through them just as if you were on Amazon looking at the photos. Only give them like 10 to 15 seconds, so not a huge amount of time, because what you don't wanna do is have them start analyzing the photos. What we're trying to do is find out what subconsciously they are doing. When they're scrolling through, what subconsciously are they picking up on? What are they? Uh, what's their eye being drawn to, and, and so forth? Right? What do they? What do they understand about the product? Once they spend too long on there, then they can actually start really analyzing it with their like conscious brain. But we want to use our subconscious brain. We want them to use their subconscious brain because when you're actually shopping on Amazon or you're going through Instagram or you're on Tinder, then you're subconsciously just making very, very quick decisions about swiping, scrolling, tapping, liking, all that sort of stuff, okay? So very, very quick, it's really important. And it's really important it's on mobile as well. After they have looked at them, okay, take the phone away. Um, or just, you know, if you're not doing this in person, just say after 15 seconds, just, you know, stop looking. Or after a few seconds. And ask them these questions, okay? What was the product and what does it come with? So just get them to say, hey, what was the product and what did it come with? They'll probably be able to get what the product was and they may or may not get what it comes with, okay? The next thing is what was the biggest selling point? Now this is really important because your biggest selling point is your differentiating factor between you and your competition. You want customers to know what your differentiating factor is. So when I first conducted this experiment with um, Hydrofuel, my brand, one of my brands, then I did this and people were scrolling through and I kept getting the same results and people weren't picking up on the biggest selling point. And I was like, what, why? Like, I've got a whole picture dedicated towards it. The problem was that the picture was at the end, right? It was the last picture they were looking at, or the last or the second to last picture they were looking at. All I did is I made a change. I put that picture to the second picture, so it's more important now, and then conducted the experiment even more times and found out that yes, 
it was the, the location of the picture that made the biggest difference. Okay, what you need to do is get this data, you need to understand what people perceive from your pictures. So when they go through them, what are they, what is being communicated to them? Okay, if you're trying to communicate that it's small, lightweight, and it comes with this awesome product, and they're not telling you those things, then there's something wrong with your pictures, either the actual design of them, the layout, um, the, the, the actual, uh, the order. And that's, that's when you can go back to the drawing board and you can work on them, and you can work on trying to communicate those features or those benefits or those um, selling points more clearly okay if you do that conduct the experiment again and then get feedback and just keep doing this until you've really really got some good photos because at the end of the day guys once you've ordered your products from China from Alibaba or where, wherever you get them from you've got a lot of time to be able to actually work on this um, and some people will say well where am I going to find people to, to do this like who am I going to ask and or, or some people will be put off, right? They'll be put off to say, oh, I don't want to ask people like their opinions and stuff because what if they don't like it? Like what if they think I'm stupid? And at the end of the day, I'm going to ask you this question, okay? Is it more important to you to have a successful product, okay, that does well, makes you money, or kind of save face a little bit and not ask your friends and family if, for their opinion? Which is more, let's flip that on its head, okay? Which would you rather uh, not have, right? I feel a little bit stupid in front of your friends when you're asking them to do something, maybe you haven't spoken to them in a while, and you say, oh, sorry, I haven't spoken to you in a few months, can you just do this for me? I feel a bit awkward and a little bit, oh, like, this, this, I don't really wanna reach out to them. Or lose loads of money because your, your product isn't converting well, okay? For me, personally, it's a no-brainer, but I'll, I'll just ask people and I'll feel a bit silly. If people I haven't spoken to in a few months, I'll just say, hey, you know, I haven't spoken to you in a while, I really need a favor from you, okay? I'd much rather do that than lose money. So, that's how you do it. <laughs> Um, conduct this experiment multiple times and let the law of large numbers do its work. Okay, you do it once, you're probably not going to get the best results. Okay, especially if you're doing it yourself. If you're if you're doing it, you're definitely not getting good results. Show it to one person, you'll get a result. Show it to two people, it'll start to get better. Three, four, five, six, seven. Do it as many times as you can. If you can do it with 10 people, do it with 10 people. Do it with 20 people, do it with 20 people. But the idea is, right, that when your product is live on Amazon, you're going to be getting a lot of people going through and looking at your photo and clicking your listings and swiping through and looking at reviews and all that sort of good stuff, okay? And it may be 100 a day. What you want to do is you want to know that a percentage of those people are going to buy. They're going to understand the features and benefits and the, the products that you're actually selling. If that difference is just 5% difference, then it can make a massive difference in your sales, in your click-through rate, in your conversion rate, and the success of your business. So this is definitely worth doing. But actually, I had where one of my students reach out to me, sent me their pictures or their listing. I gave them some feedback about um, particularly their first image. And I was like, look, when I look at the, the screen on Amazon, I type in your search term, your picture doesn't stand out. Okay, it doesn't make me want to click on it. So make it more clickable, make it more clickbaity, make, make me want to click it. Changed it and then overnight, literally their sales went from kind of three to five a day up to like 20, 30, 40 a day, doing over a thousand pounds a day. All literally overnight, and I, I wish I had the screen, I'll probably try, I'll try and find the screenshot and throw it up, but it literally went like this, it went like that, and it went what, like straight up because they changed literally a couple of Im images. If, they had conducted these sorts of experiments beforehand, they would have never had that issue because they would know that the images wouldn't convert and they weren't interesting to click on because people would have told them, right? They would have told them. The last thing, at the end, you'll have feedback as to what real people think, okay? If their feedback doesn't align with what you want to communicate, edit the images and conduct the experiments again. Don't edit the images and assume that they're great because you don't know that they're great. You need to conduct the experiment again. Use the same people, right? Or use different people. Just try and find more people. So we now we know about kind of scrolling through your images and, you know, people are picking up on your features and benefits, what stands out about your product compared to the competitors. So we've done that. The, the main thing we need, really need to do is work on your hero image so when I say hero image I mean your first image okay because this is going to make such a huge difference on your organic rank and your PPC right your conversion of your PPC because every time you have an advertisement on Amazon your your image is being basically thrown to the top of the page if 
your picture is the one that people's eye is drawn to automatically, then you're gonna get more clicks on your page. If your pictures are then high converting and you have reviews and all those sort of good things, then you're more likely to make a sale. Okay, so we wanna get this first image on point. So this is how you do it. This is the experiment that you need to do. Take a screenshot of the first page of results when you type in your keyword, okay? So type in your keyword, main keyword, broadest keyword, and take a screenshot. This is on desktop, okay? Just because it's, it's easier to, to do the experiment on desktop. Take a screenshot of it, and then what you're gonna do, edit the photo and replace one of the results with a picture of your product, okay? So edit one of the results with a picture of your product. And importantly, don't choose the first photo, but maybe pick something around the middle or to the left, but not super high up on the listing, but maybe a little bit further down uh, on that, sorry, the search results, because quite often people will just automatically look at the first few listings, but we wanna, we wanna try and make it hard for ourselves. You're then gonna show this image to someone and ask, or, or to people and ask them, which one would you click on? Now they don't know which product is yours. They, and it's really important they don't know which product is yours. And you'll say, hey, look at these list of results, which product would you click on? And they will circle one or tap on one or, or say which one it is, okay? And of course you conduct that experiment multiple times and let the law of large numbers do its work. This is really important. At the end, you'll have feedback, okay? As to what real people would click on. What real people would say, I would click on this one. Now, if your listing isn't coming up enough, so if people aren't saying they're clicking on your listing, there's something wrong with your image, okay? There's something wrong with it. It's just not quite right. It's not engaging people. It's not making people want to click it. So what you do is you repeat the experiment until you have the listing that gets clicked the most or a large majority of the time or you know, more so than before. So change your photo and then redo the experiment. Okay, maybe add some color into it, make something bigger, add in all your products together, try and differentiate yourself from your competitors by making it stand out a little bit more and uh, making it clickable, right? You want people to click the actual, the actual picture or the actual listing because you're never gonna make a sale unless you can get someone to notice your, uh, your actual picture. Again, things like increasing this by 5% or 10%, then, it will make a ginormous, I mean a huge difference on the success of your business because if you can increase it just by that tiny little bit, that means that you're gonna be stealing sales from other people, from your competitors. So they make less sales and you make more, which means that your BSR, your best seller rank will decrease, which means your rank will get better. You'll go up towards the top of the page for that keyword or, or for multiple keywords. So this is super, super, super important and it's integral to the success of your business. So really make Make sure that you absolutely nail it. All right, so that is the uh, the customer verification, how you can predict customer behavior with the law of large numbers. So make sure that if you are launching a product, your next product or your first product, that you're not just waiting for your products to arrive, you've got your first iteration of the images and you're thinking, right, they're the best images ever. Conduct these experiments while you're waiting to go live, okay? Or even once you have launched, because you can always improve your, your click-through rate. You can always improve your conversion rate just by changing a few tiny, tiny details uh, within your images. But obviously it's gonna be better if you do that straight away so that when you launch your products, right? When you spend you know, the extra money and the extra uh, kind of resources trying to get that product launched to the first page, you don't wanna get it launched and then realize that it doesn't convert. Now you definitely don't wanna do that. You wanna get it up to that first page and you know, you know that, that a certain percentage of people that you've tested will click on your listing, okay? That you know that a certain percentage of people will understand what your product is and what it comes with and how it's different to your competitors and what's the key selling point. If you do these two tests, guys, if you do these two tests, you will get better results, okay? You will get better results because the law of large numbers does not lie, right? It does not lie, it's based off statistics that have been tried and tested for a long, long time, way before I was alive, you know, way before you were alive probably. Trust the process and, and put your effort into creating high converting images and images that people wanna click because that's how you're gonna be successful selling on Amazon. Hope you have enjoyed today's video, guys. If you did, make sure you leave a comment with any questions down below. Um, if you're pumped for the functional design formula, let me know as well. It will be coming, I don't know, probably within a couple of months or so. Um, and it goes into obviously a huge amount of detail. This is just a draft at the moment. So yeah, it's really cool. Smash the like button if you have liked this video. And of course, remember guys, you're just one product away.